Professor Roy Prosterman. Roy is one of the leading specialists in land reform and co-author of the book, Land Reform and Democratic Development. Over the past 20 years, he's done extensive field work in more than 18 countries and is one of the world's foremost experts in devising global strategies to eradicate hunger. 10 years ago, when Werner, Bob Fuller, and I co-founded The Hunger Project, we sat down with many international experts so that we could better educate ourselves about the problem of world hunger and what actions, if taken, would make a difference in bringing about its end. Of all the many authorities we spoke with, one man in particular stood out, both for his unequivocal commitment to the end of hunger as well as for his ability to confine and make distinct the problem of hunger, make the issue of hunger confrontable, and make accessible the kind of expert data and information that those of us who aren't experts need in order to be effective in expressing our commitment. You, you must know how empowering it is that there are those who are conducting kind of, of rigorous, disciplined inquiry into the substance of the issues, and, and that with all that information at their command, they, like us, can see the completion of this human problem. Friends, I am very pleased to present to you Professor Roy Prosterman of our Global Board of Directors. John, thank you. It was just 10 years ago that I was privileged to stand on this stage when we launched The Hunger Project. I'm pleased to report to you that the world has made significant overall progress since that time. There are two points I would like to make today. One is that now, more than ever, the extent of hunger is finite, limited, confined. The second is that ending hunger sustainably by the turn of the century is not only po <clears throat> possible, it is affordable. Let's begin by looking at the scope of hunger today as indicated by levels of infant mortality. As most of you on this broadcast know, the infant mortality rate measures the number of infants who die before their first birthday per 1,000 live births. When a country's IMR reaches the level of 50 or less per 1,000, the basic human needs of a society can be regarded as being met, including the need for adequate nutrition. This is a benchmark which many organizations, including the Hunger Project, UNICEF, and the World Health Organization, now use. When the IMR falls to 50 or below, hunger as a basic society-wide issue has ended. Ending hunger is a very recent phenomenon in history. In 1900, not a single country had ended hunger as a basic issue. By 1940, just 47 years ago, eight countries had ended hunger. By 1960, that number had increased to 34. And now, in 1987, 84 countries have ended hunger. In recent decades, we have learned a great deal about what it takes in terms both of time and resources. And we have learned that the end of hunger is now a live option, an authentic possibility, not merely a hope or a dream. Even many of the remaining countries have made substantial progress, again using levels of infant mortality as our standard. If you imagine the entire world population as 100 people represented by these circles, 52 of them, more than half, live in the 84 countries where hunger has already ended. Eight more live in countries where we can predict that only a modest effort is needed. Nine more live in countries which require a reasonable, persistent effort. 25 live where a substantial effort will be required, but on a scale that has already succeeded in many countries. Five live where ending hunger will take an extraordinary, though still not unprecedented effort. 
but only one lives in a country that will require an accomplishment for which we have no precedent. The end of hunger is achievable, but what would it cost to provide the opportunity to end hunger by the end of the century for all the hungry people of this world? While many kinds of effort are underway, let's calculate the maximum cost for the sake of illustration for one of the most efficacious approaches, what I would call the family farm approach. As we explore this scenario, we should keep in mind that fully 60% of the people who live in countries where hunger persists work in agriculture. Through this family farm approach to ending hunger, we can create sharp increases in productivity and generate resources for hungry people to end their own hunger by providing land ownership where it is absent and combining it with basic support, such as credit, inputs, technical advice, a fair price for what they produce, to motivated small owner-operator farmers. As productivity increases on the family farm, the newly prosperous farmers buy better homes, clothing, and consumer goods, creating new non-agricultural jobs and more income for previously unemployed or underemployed people. Also, more resources become available to be invested in social overhead, such as safe water, sanitation, immunization, and education. With the combination of better nutrition and better health care, infant mortality plummets. And experience has demonstrated when people have assurance that the children they do have will survive, family planning takes hold and birth rates also plummet. To calculate costs, I'll divide the world's 315 million worst off families into three distinct groups. The poorest are landless farmers, about 100 million rural families who have no land. They are tenants and laborers. They need land ownership and support for credit, marketing, and simple infrastructure. For the quickest implementation, they also need basic health, education, and family planning services. Experience has shown all this can be provided, on average, for about $2,800 per family. There are also about 100 million farm families who already own small parcels of land, but need a similar package of farm, health, and other support services at a cost of about $1,500 per family. Finally, there are 115 million poor families off the farm or in cities who need education, basic infrastructure, health and family planning programs, and in some cases, access to credit and other job creation support, all of which could be provided for about $1,600 per family. When you add this up, you get a total investment in the world's poorest people in creating opportunity for the world's poorest people of $613 billion over the next 13 years to bring about the sustainable end of hunger. Of this total, by my best estimate, about 60%, or $362 billion, is already available. Part gets paid back by the beneficiaries themselves. Some exists in current programs in hungry countries or in international aid programs. What we would need to add in new resources would amount to approximately $250 billion between now and the end of the century, or $19 billion per year. How much is $19 billion? <laughs> Sounds like a lot, but it's what we spend in the world on defense and the military each and every week. It's what we spend in the world on cigarettes every two months. Is this too high a price if, over the next 13 years, it would end hunger in our world? Ending hunger is affordable. There is no doubt we can do it if only we will.